Hello everybody. Thank you for coming. My name is Altmush Nair Khan. I'm also known as Atish. I am a video game developer, game director, and game designer. With eight years of experience, I'm also a free and open source software advocate. And one of my goals is to spread awareness of free as in freedom software, sometimes referred to as Libre software or software that gives its users freedom to do whatever they want with it. Since most businesses in the world these days rely on closed source and proprietary software, it is important for everyone to know just how dangerous malware and computer viruses are. Computer viruses are a kind of malware. We first need to take a look at why malware exists and how malware works. Slide, please. Slide two, slide two. Second slide, please. Yes, this is a second. First, let's understand the difference between malware and computer virus. Malware is a term used to describe a program or software that performs malicious activities on a user's computer that the user would not want it to do. Malware can be as severe as a rootkit, which can prevent your operating system from booting or takes, your, takes over your entire computer, giving the hacker full access to your hardware and data. The less severe types of, the less severe types of malware include programs called adware, which can inject themselves into browsers their goal is to display ads on your browser, which will replace the ads that you would normally see on a non-infected computer. Of course, those ads can be links to scams or other types of malware designed to harm the user. For example, you might see an ad for a get-rich-quick scheme, which can actually be very common these days, or an ad to invest in a pyramid scheme. Slide three. Uh, slide three, please. There are other types of malware that don't affect the user's computer as well, and instead infect the server that the user is connecting to, which also means that they will work on mobile operating systems. So computer viruses usually affect desktop computers, but they can also infect mobile operating systems if you're not careful. They can even infect iOS devices, which are very, no very well known for being extremely secure. What does that mean exactly? The best hackers can create malware that can infect the servers of a bank, and actually intercept the form that you fill when you log into your bank account. So essentially, when you're using your mobile operating system to log into your bank, if there is a something called man in the middle attack, if the hacker intercepts your form, the hacker can actually read what you have placed inside that form and use that to exploit you. This is a very common technique that the hackers use to hack into your bank account. Slide four. So we'll now talk about a computer virus, which is a specific type of malware that works extremely similar to a biological virus. It att attaches itself to a host process 
just like a biological virus usually attaches itself to a host cell. Most computer viruses can actually self-replicate and infect an entire network of computers through various methods. The most common method, before security systems were as advanced as they are now, viruses could easily transfer from one computer to another via USB or portable storage devices. Slide five. This is the wrong slide, slide five, number five. Slide five. Up end for today. Slide five, number five. Okay, back in the early days of computing, viruses were just used to prank people most of the time. These days, they're usually used to make money off the victim in various ways. The most common method being data harvesting. The reason why this method is so effective is because large tech companies such as Meta, Google, and Microsoft can collect your data legally up to a certain limit. Their privacy policy will tell you about what they're collecting from you. So whenever you sign up, make sure that you actually take a look at the privacy policy of the company that you are registering with. Google and Meta do make a large chunk of their profits by collecting user data and selling it to advertisers. That's the reason why when you log into Facebook, you can see ads which are relevant to your search history because they sell that data to advertisers. However, they also keep your identity, well, they say that they keep your identity a secret, but that's not always necessary. They can also use the data to make better competing products using the data that they collect. So if Google and Facebook collect your data and they take a look at your, um, they take a look at your behavior, what they can do is they can create competing products which will sell better than their competitors. So that's what they use your data for. Uh, slide six, slide six hackers can collect as much data as they want. So big tech can collect certain types of data. And they can also sell certain kind of data legally. For hackers, legality is not a factor. Hackers will usually steal credentials. I spoke about stealing your credentials when I said that they'll intercept the form that you fill on websites. They will be able to log into your bank account, your meta account, or even access highly sensitive emails. They can do this via a malware known as a keylogger. So keylogger is a fancy name for a, for a kind of malware that can actually take logs of the keys that you're pressing on your keyboard. So if you're uh, like using your keys to enter a password, the hacker knows what your password is because they keep track of what keys you're pressing. They can do this via malware known as a keylogger, which essentially keeps a log of the keys that you press. They can also intercept the form that you fill when logging in and get the credentials from there. Of course, the hackers hide this by actually sending credentials from there. So if a hacker has, has stolen your credentials, they'll actually insert those credentials into the website and make it appear that you logged in normally so you don't know that your data has been stolen. So when this happens, a copy of your data and credentials is sent to the hacker's server, which is called the command and control server. The hacker can use the data to exploit the victim further, such as clearing their bank account. They can also use your Facebook Messenger to send malicious links to your friends. They might click those links and get inf infected by that malware as well. So this, hap this used to happen back in the Skype days where hackers would actually take over your Skype account and they would send malicious links to all of your contacts 
And after that, they would click that link and they would get infected as well. This was a very common, common uh, attack that hackers use. These days, it's less common because Facebook and Skype are, generally speaking, more secure. Next slide. Let's talk about the most dangerous kind of malware, which is the ransomware. Ransomware is the most direct kind of attack that a hacker can use. So ransomware, when you execute a ransomware on a computer, it encrypts all the data that is on the computer. The only way to decrypt all your files and data is by paying the hacker a large sum of money. So ransomware is just a software or a program that will encrypt all your data so your data will no longer be usable. And then they're going to show a small dialog and that dialog may contain a link to the hacker's wallet address and they usually ask for payment in Bitcoin. So if you pay the hacker, they're going to give you a decryption key, which is going to be used to decrypt your data. So what happens is that if you have any personal data like pictures, files, uh, any of your emails, all of them will get encrypted, which means you can't access them without a decryption key. The hacker has a decryption key. So when you pay them, they give you that decryption key, and then you can unlock your data. Next slide. Now we're going to talk about the difference between active malware and passive malware. So passive malware is the kind of malware or computer virus that is pre-programmed to, to execute a few lines of code and it is not being controlled actively by the hacker. So what happens is a passive malware is pre-programmed to perform specific tasks. They can also act in a more dynamic way depending on what the user is doing. So if you're infected by a passive malware and if you go to a certain website, the malware can dynamically change its instructions and it can actually intercept the form and then steal your credentials. Passive malware also has the ability to self-replicate. So if your computer is connected to other computers via LAN, which is local area, area network, or WAN, called wide area network, the malware can replicate and infect all other computers. Next slide. Next slide. So before we take a look at one of the most dangerous kinds of malware, we first need to understand what a computer shell is. So you may, must have seen this kind of uh, shell in movies, which is basically a command line interface, or it is, a, it is called a shell because using a shell, you can give your computer commands. And this is in all operating systems. When you're using a GUI, graphical user interface, when you click a graphical user interface or perform any kind of uh, task using a GUI, in, in the background, the commands are being run on a shell. So uh, in general, operating system shells use either a command line interface or a graphical user interface. Depending on a computer's role and particular operation, it is named a shell because it is the outermost layer around the operating system. So when an operating system needs an instruction, you usually send them via shell commands. All operating systems have shells. However, you will see the users of Unix-like operating systems such as Linux, OpenBSD, and even the Mac OS use shell to install package packages, which are programs or software, or perform various other functions that a Windows 10 user does using the GUI. It is extremely uncommon for anyone to use a shell on a mobile operating system. So you'll never see anybody use a shell on iOS or Android because it's not necessary as all the applications that run on iOS or Android are sandboxed anyway. So you don't need a shell because those applications are, are disconnected from the operating system and they cannot access, they do not have root access or administrative privileges when they're running. Next slide. 
So this is an example of a reverse shell. Essentially what happens is the malware, when it affects your computer, it lets the hacker take control of, your, of the shell of your computer by something called a reverse shell hack. So this is an example of active malware where the actual malware is being controlled by a hacker, by a human, which makes the malware extremely unpredictable. And also, if you are unfortunate enough to be infected by a reverse shell, the hacker can do whatever they want with your computer. They can steal your files, they can encrypt your files, or they can execute remote code, including other types of malware, which can also infect other computers on your LAN or WAN. Next slide. Sorry, previous slide, previous slide, previous slide, previous slide. Okay, so if you're infected by a reverse shell, the shell won't open on your computer. So I gave you a picture of a shell. You won't see that shell on your computer. The shell spawns on the hacker's computer. And then they can use that shell to enter commands on, on your computer. So if they want to access files, and most shells have that, they will, the hacker will basically run file commands on their shell, which will affect your computer. And this can happen over the internet. So the hacker does not even need to be part of your network. They only need access to the internet and your computer needs to be infected. That's, that's the only thing that they require. So let's talk about what you can do to make sure that you never get infected. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, so let's make sure that uh, you never get infected. The first thing we'll take a look at is why you should use free and open source software or free OS like GNU slash Linux. Now, with Windows and Mac OS, these are closed source operating systems. You cannot look at their code. And most of the applications that run on Windows 10 and the Mac OS, they are closed source as well. Since the code is not open to the public, you will not know what that code is doing. And since most open source software and free software, which is free as in freedom software, is run by communities, communities can easily take a look at the code and remove any malware or anything malicious inside of that software, including the operating system. So Linux is used by many companies around the world, and it was even used in the rover that was sent to Moz because it is extremely secure and it's open source. So if somebody tries to add something malicious into Linux, people will simply remove it. So on Windows operating system, to make sure that you never get infected by a reverse, a reverse shell or anybody can hack you remotely, you can use something called a firewall, which is going to prevent incoming incoming commands, and Windows already has a firewall. However, you will need to configure it so only the incoming commands that you want will be accepted by your computer. Another thing that you can do is you can download programs and software from official app stores and don't jailbreak your iOS device. So iOS is one of the most secure systems in the uh, most secure operating systems in the world. However, if you try to jailbreak your iOS, what will happen is that you will essentially be removing all of the safety features that Apple has. So avoid jailbreaking your iOS device and also do not install any program that is not in the official app store such as Google Play or the app store on Apple. Another thing that you can do is you can learn how to use a virtual machine. So on Windows 10, you can actually have another virtual machine which is running Windows 10, but that will be sandboxed. It will be in a container. So if your virtual machine ever gets infected, that virus will not go to your host system. So if you're, for example, using Linux, you can actually launch a virtual machine of, of Windows 10, and if that machine gets infected, it will not infect your Linux system since it's sandboxed. And also, since that virtual machine is sandboxed, 
uh, anything that can infect the network will not be able to infect your Linux system. Other than that, you can learn how to use the Tor browser and you can learn how to use VPNs. So the Tor browser is an open project and it is active right now. Mo many activists use it and it anonymizes data and in a to in, when you connect to the Tor network, your traffic is bounced across many computers so your data is anonymized and encrypted. So if you connect to the Tor network, you can also prevent man-in-the-middle attacks because the hacker will only be able to see you connect to the VPN server or to the Tor network. They'll not know which website you're accessing. If you're using the HTTPS protocol, which is pretty common these days, HTTPS also encrypts your data. However, for added security, you can connect to the Tor network or a VPN so that you basically don't have to deal with a man-in-the-middle attack ever. As if the hacker tries to hack you, they'll only see that you have connected to the VPN server or to the Tor network. And if you use a bridge to connect to the Tor network, then they won't even know that you're connected to the Tor network. And if you are really, really uh, concerned about your privacy, and if you really want to secure your data like you, you um, uh, being on the internet absolutely freaks you out. You can use a operating system such as Cubes OS or Tails OS, which are a live USB type OS. So when you use Tails OS, you are running the operating system on a USB, and that USB operating system is not persistent, which means every time you take the operating system out of your computer, the OS resets. So any malware or anything, any data you save on that operating system while it is being operated is deleted. Tails OS is known for its privacy, uh, privacy features because everything that you do on Tail, Tails OS is done through the Tor network. So you connect to Facebook, you connect to Google, you connect to any website, it's going, going to be connected through the Tor network. Whereas Cubes OS takes it one level further if you launch a browser on Cubes OS, it runs in a virtual machine. So it doesn't run on the host operating system. Whenever you launch a program on Cubes OS, it's going to launch that program inside a container, which is going to be a virtual machine. So if that program is malicious, if it contains a virus, well, it will not affect you. Another thing is that since Cubes OS is also a live USB only operating system, it will also reset. There is no persistence in CubeOS either. And CubesOS is actually recommended for activists and people who, uh, it's even recommended for journalists if they have to use it and they don't want anybody to track them. Uh, CubesOS and TailsOS is also good for people who do not want to be tracked or fingerprinted, which is fingerprinting, if you do not know, is, uh, is basically websites trying to identify who you are by uh, logging, logging your hardware ID. So if you go from one, one website to another, websites will know who you are because they've fingerprinted you. They know that, uh, they'll know the ID of your hardware. So with Cubes OS and Tails OS, they also spoof your hardware IDs, which means that if you visit a website, they won't know who you are because every time you visit that website, your ID will be different. So that was the last slide, and we can move on to the Q&A section if anybody has any questions. Yeah, I have a question. So uh, my question is, uh, it's OK, it's OK, I can ask without my How hackers keep their identity secure? Well, hackers have numerous ways, but if the hacker is using the Tor network to connect to your computer or using the Tor network to get data or to send data to their server, since Tor is designed to keep identities a secret, you will not know who the hacker is. Okay, when you are using the uh, USB system, 
Doesn't they notify the person who is um, the hacker? Yeah, they do. They do. So, like they can get hacked. Here. They can get hacked. The purpose of using the Cubes OS or Tails OS is that the hacker can't do anything to you. That's the purpose. Like if you're a journalist and if you have to send files and you don't want to be cracked, you'll use Tails OS or Cubes OS. So even if somebody tries to know where, what your location is, they'll not know. So if your internet traffic is bounced off Tor network, you might be in Pakistan, whereas the hacker, uh, when he takes a look at your traffic data, it's somewhere in America or it's coming from Canada or some other place. Because uh, what happens is when you connect to the Tor network, your internet traffic goes to one computer, uh, uh, which can be anywhere in the world, then goes to another. So it's kind of like a network of computers, and every time the, the internet traffic is sent to the other computer, it's encrypted. So you'll not know who you are. Uh, so it's me it means that we are not safe in any case? No, we are safe. Because he will, he will, uh, if the hacker tries to hack, hack you, they'll end up hacking the uh, exit node. They'll not hack you. Okay. Yeah, because one computer, uh, your computer, then it, uh, the internet, internet uh, the traffic goes to another computer then goes to another computer, then it exits. And then uh, with the website you're accessing sends data back to that computer, and it sends data to that computer, and then to your computer. So it goes to three computers. So the hacker will only know the exit node. They'll not know about, uh, they'll not be able to attack your computer. Okay. Thank you. Anyone? Okay. Thank you very much for the talk. My name is uh, Omer. Uh, I'm a 3D designer. I wanted to ask about NFTs. Uh, I don't uh, know exactly how they work. So the people who buy NFTs, uh, are they, uh, how prone are they to uh, hackers? And people usually say that this NFT and blockchain, all of this is very secure. So what makes it different? Is it actually secure? It is as secure as if you have a, a piece of art in your home, and if a burglar comes into your home, he can steal the art and take it away. It's just as secure as that. So uh, what, it depends on how secure your wallet is. So if your wallet is not secure and you're not careful about uh, your wallet, then if they, if they get access to your wallet, they can steal your NFTs. So your wallet has to be secure. Uh, but who keeps the check on blockchain technology? That uh, the, the blockchain is public, like it's a public ledger. So uh, basically, the, the reason why NFTs are uh, popular these days is because it is, uh, they have proof of ownership. So if you own a piece of art, you can prove that you actually own it because you can see it on the blockchain. You'll see it in your wallet. So that's the reason why they are... Uh, they are um, very valuable. So it's similar to owning an expensive piece of art. Like you have a receipt for that, or you'll have, uh, I do not know what, what, what they use, but I'm pretty sure you have proof of ownership for pieces of art as well. So in a, on the blockchain, it's public. So you, if you own an NFT, you can tell a person that I've got proof of ownership. However, if somebody hacks your wallet, they can take your NFT away. And this has actually happened. Recently, an NFT was stolen, which was worth I think a few million dollars it recently happened. So uh, he's, uh, that person is trying to get it back. I don't remember exactly what that NFT was. Like I read that about a week ago, I've forgotten, but it was easy to steal once they got access to their wallet. So your wallet has to be extremely secure. The, like uh, make sure that nobody gets your, I believe they call it um, seed address. I don't remember what it's called, but um, if uh, they should not get access to your wallet. That's basically it. Um, so the hackers have some kind of uh, network so that we don't have. Do you have network that they don't have that they don't have that they hacking? No. You can, you can basically be a hacker uh, if you have access to the internet. But it's not that easy these days. It used to be easy. Yeah, it's not. No, uh, like if I give you a, if I am a game developer, 
I can easily, if I'm your friend, I can say, hey, play my game. That game might have a malicious feature which will give me all of your pictures. You'll not know. Uh, and it, on Android, this, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is easy to do. On iOS, it's slightly difficult. Because these days, if you have an application on iOS, you have to exactly tell uh, what data it's collecting. Uh, well, well if, if an application has access to your gallery, they can, in theory, take all of your pictures and use them for whatever they want. They can also have access to your messages. And if the, if the application has access to your microphone, you are relying on their good intentions not to record what you're saying. That's the reason why privacy, uh, the, the phones that are meant for journalists and activists, which use a free operating system, uh, free Android operating system, not the one given by Google, uh, they have kill switches. So you can kill the microphone, you can kill the webcam, and you can kill various other uh, okay. parts of the parts of the uh, mobile, including the battery. So uh, even the mobile towers can't track you. Mm -hmm. So um, how the firewall works? Firewall blocks some incoming messages or incoming traffic data, uh, internet data. That's all. Like uh, if if there are four doors in this hall, a firewall can block three of them, where, and it blocks certain ports. Okay, still we are not safe. <laughs> no, we are because, for example, if you want to accept data only from Facebook, you can tell the firewall only accept data from Facebook. Don't accept data from anybody else. And Facebook is very unlikely that they'll hack you because they can get in serious trouble if they try to collect or sell your data, which uh, they haven't uh, spoken about in the privacy policy. Mm -hmm. So we are like, you, even if you're hacked right now, there is a, there is a chance that you don't know it. You can only like the like sometimes where you get emails or when you get uh, like um, spam messages, like uh, the, your email addresses like um, it is public, but your browser data and the spam messages that you receive might be relevant to what you're searching. So sometimes hacking or mal malware can just be trackers. They're just tracking your spying spying on you and just trying to find out what you will buy buy if we show you an ad. So there, there are various types of hacks. Well, I was talking about ransomware and the other types of serious hacks like reverse shells, you will most likely never have to deal with a reverse shell because reverse shells are usually uh, reserved mainly for corporations and servers where you actually want to destroy a server or you want to uh, hack into a organization. So you will most likely never have to deal with a reverse shell. It's way too much work for, well, uh, just to hack a desktop computer. It's not, it doesn't make much sense. But if you are a fa uh, like a politician or a celebrity, you can get, uh, like you're in danger of getting uh, a, reverse shell, a, a reverse shell infection. So it, it is possible. Especially if you're a politician, like you can see WikiLeaks, how that happened. You know, they, they, they may have some kind of an intercept. I do not know what they use, but I know for certain that uh, the WikiLeaks did leak the emails of multiple politicians. So they used something. Like it, uh, it, and, but you won't see WikiLeaks leaking everybody's data. You know? so. Thank you. Um, hello. Okay. Uh, it may sound a very dumb question, but uh, okay. You, as you mentioned, that uh, Meta sells our data to advertisers. Hmm? Advertisers. So how do we prevent that? Oh, you cannot. Okay. I, I mean, you, you, you agree that your data will be sold when you sign up. Hmm. True. Just don't use it. Like use mevi.com, which doesn't sell your data. They don't, they don't even have crackers. All right. हम आपने भी जिस तरह कहा कि जब हम sign up करते हैं तो हम ज़रा terms and conditions को usually नहीं पढ़ते वो होती भी इतनी लंबी है कि कौन उसको पढ़े पढ़ना चाहिए और हमारी need भी होती है कि हमने उसको use करना है तो no it's, uh, it's uh, uh, like um, please ask your question that 
क्वेश्चन ये वैसे एक रिमार्क था ना कि ये हम अक्सर जो हमारी सिस्टम में वनरेबिलिटी है उसके लिए दरवाज़ा शायद हम खुद ही खोल देते हैं और फिर फिर बाद में रोने का फ़ायदा नहीं है क्वेश्चन आप ये मैं पूछ सकता हूँ कि क्या हैकिंग बाइट्स नेम एक बड़ा ड्रेकोनियन सा जहन में आता है कि बड़े ालम किस्म के लोग हैं जो आपके डेटा को एक्सेस करेंगे आपके प्राइवेसी को ब्रीच कर रहे हैं और उनको कोई गरज नहीं है आपकी फीलिंग से आपके हार्डवर्क से बट क्या हैकिंग हमेशा अनएथिकल ही होती है इट डिपेंड्स लाइक हैकिंग लाइक द ओ जी डेफिनेशन लाइक द ओल्ड डेफिनेशन ऑफ हैकिंग वॉज हैकरस यूज टू फाइंड वनरेबिलिटी सो दे कैन बी पैच and kali linux and uh, black arch are linux distributions which are designed uh, for for hackers so when a website is deployed kali linux and black arch can be used to find vulnerabilities so hacking can be used for good purposes as well uh, but generally speaking when you're talking about a hacker they're usually going to exploit the user for money and uh, they're like we we are not only talking about computer viruses we are talking about malware any kind of a program or software that can do something malicious is malware spyware is also malware because it spies on your activities and um, windows 10 is spyware however they're not really going to harm you but if uh, you're an activist and if uh, if the us government if you're not in the us you don't need to worry but the us government can subpoena certain companies and they'll ha- they'll have to hand your data over so they do collect your data linux does not yeah. linux operating systems do not co- collect your data but if you're on facebook if you're on whatsapp whatsapp can read your messages we know that because uh there was a problem where uh, people were sharing things which were illegal in the us illegal pictures so WhatsApp had a team which would scan everybody's messages for those kind of pictures and they would get in trouble if they if they uh, you know found those pictures signal is is completely like uh, it, it doesn't keep logs of your data because we have proof of that the FBI subpoenaed a signal to hand over data of of a user the, all they could give was the login information the date the account was created and the last log out that's it they had no no they had no logs whereas whatsapp and meta are known are are known to share data with the fbi and if you use session that's even more secure because session doesn't even need a phone number for you to register with them and whenever you send a message on session it bounces off the tor network so people can't even identify you they don't even know where you are what about uh, catchy kind of uh, ads that just pop 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 in uh, on your screen you mean those messages that uh, uh, like so you've got a message from the, this person and uh, singles like uh, like messages for singles right like if you're a single they'll say if you're a single this this woman is messaging you those kind of ads. yeah you can you can yeah. you can date uh, hot girls in yeah. your in your yeah, those, area no, yeah those are those are links to scams most people actually get infected uh, with malware due to that due to that so if you're visiting a website and you see a pop up that uh, your your computer is infected that's that's uh, basically a malicious link don't ever click that so and they can also say that uh, this girl wants to date you so that's also malicious don't click that that those are fake Uh, how do they uh, hack your uh, uh, they, facebook accounts etc we we have had a lot my my facebook account has been hacked yeah. so what is that they usually intercept the form that you fill on facebook so if you are logging in they are going to intercept that form and get your credential from there so what they do is instead of uh, the, your credential being sent to facebook they get sent to the hacker and then uh, they can use those credentials to log into your facebook account they can also inject your browser so they don't even need to uh, intercept the form like there are certain malware that injects itself into the browser and then uh, they can track everything that you do on the browser so every time you uh, fill something using your keys they can inter- they can basically log that and use that to um, hack you or to harm you
पीछे सवाल जवाब कर Uh, I'm just curious, was because I'm not expert in that field. But I'm just curious, what language they are using for the malware? I mean, they are, they are using the machine language or the uh, some special. What what sort of languages they are using? Because they can they can enter in any language most of the time. Yeah. So Windows and whatever. So what usually they use the language? Which language? Because they must be very expert. Because you are said they are always attacking the vulnerable points. So this is it means the he they know all the boundary of the that program or the, the that software that they can uh, malware that uh, software or application whatever your uh, programming any programming language can be used to write uh, virus computer virus malware any 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 language yeah. except for, of course there are certain languages uh, sorry i'll correct general purpose languages can be used for malware general purpose uh -huh. so general purpose languages python c++ uh, c sharp java all of these can be used to write malware but they must be general purpose languages there are certain languages which are only meant for for a specific task like uh, in flutter dot dot is a uh, most people don't know about this dot is used in flutter it is a front and it is a language to create the front end for Flutter apps. You can write malware in that as well, but it's uh, kind of difficult, yeah. right? But any, la any general purpose computer language can be used for malware. I can, write a, uh, or I can write a computer virus in Python which will delete all of your files. So it can be, but it's not dependent on the, the, the software, you, the, it is attacking or something? It uh, does depend on the operating the system. Operating system. Operating system. Like on iOS, it's very difficult to write a malware for iOS because of the security features in Apple, uh, that Apple provides, sorry. However, uh, hackers can find different ways. They can inject uh, adware into the Safari browser, which is, again, difficult. But instead of injecting uh, stuff on the browser, they can inject uh, adware on the server. So if, you, if the user is... Uh, visiting a website, instead of seeing Google ads, they are going to see the ads of the hacker instead. And uh, for example, those, those uh, kind of messages, hot singles in your area, those, mm -hmm. are, those are injected by hackers. Okay. So what about the banking, when they are uh, crack the banking data, yeah. like most of the time, some, sometime we listen about the HBL or sometime uh, that, that. So what they are, because they are very secure system, but Oh, the cat well, cat. if you're using Windows 10 and if, if somebody has infected uh, your Windows 10 machine with a key logger, uh, they, can, they can create logs of the keys that you're pressing. So they'll know what your password and your username is. No, this is on the ATM machine. But oh, I'm talking about the... No, I'm talking about an online portal. Oh. Yeah, if Windows 10, if they infect Windows 10, uh -huh. they, 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 can, they can install something called a key logger, which keeps tracks of, uh, keep track of the keys that you're pressing. So that's what they can do. Another thing that they can do is if uh, you're using an extension, a browser extension on Firefox, Google Chrome, or any other uh, browser, sometimes they don't, tell, uh, they, don't, uh, they don't tell what they're doing. So extensions, some extensions can read the HTML that is dis being displayed on the, on, the, on, the, on the browser. So that can also be used to exploit the user if the extension is sending the HTML page, the data that is on the HTML, uh, uh, because HTML, the, like the HTML is, uh, like you can read the HTML in the browser as well. There is a shortcut for that. So that data can be sent to the, to the uh, hacker. Uh, the hackers can actually also know how much money you have in your account, if they can only read the numbers that uh, is, are just being displayed on the page. Mm. Like if you see Google, uh, Google, indexes, indexes uh, pages on the internet using something called crawlers. Mm -hmm. They're called crawlers, which are basically programs that scan each and every web page on the internet. So hackers can use that as well to get your data. Yeah. So what's the potential if uh, I'm employed in an Apple company and I leave it, uh, so that I, am I capable to malware their software or something like that? Is it possible? Please ask the question. I mean, way. if I'm employed in an Apple software, uh, I mean, 
uh, software engineer, something like that. And if I'm involved in the programming of that s special uh, software, and I leave it, so can I'm potential to crank out malware that yes, software? Yes, yes, you can infect Apple servers, but uh, they'll most likely know. No. Yeah. They'll most likely know, yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll, like, uh, like, I know that the person who was the creator of this website called Pirate Bay, he used to live inside a Faraday's cage, which is basically, well, Faraday's cage is difficult for me to explain, but it's, uh, he had aluminum foils on all of his walls, so nobody could, uh, uh, like, no electrical signal could enter his room. So th that's how he stayed anonymous for a very long time before he was apprehended. What security measures would you suggest to ensure data and computers safely? Uh, switch to free and open source software. If your work doesn't depend on it, that means install Linux. Learn how to use Linux. Uh, if you really, really are an activist, journalist, or you don't want to be tracked at all, only use live USB, uh, USB operating systems like Cubes OS or Tails OS. Tails OS is pre-configured to bounce all of your traffic data on on, on, on the Tor network, and Cubes OS runs all programs inside of a virtual machine. So if you get attacked by malware, and uh, the malware has attached itself to a particular program, you will not get infected because inside a virtual machine. However, virtual machines, if you're using a virtual machine, it does not mean that your host system cannot be infected. It's just that it's more difficult to infect the host system. So if you have a host system, for example, I use virtual machines. I, I, I use Arch Linux. So I've got Arch Linux as my host, and the guest operating systems is Windows 10 because there are certain pieces of software that do not work on Linux. So if my Windows 10 machine gets infected, there is a chance that my Linux host is also going to get infected, but, the, but it's extremely like the chances of that happening is, are low, very low. However, it is possible that viruses can, uh, get in, uh, viruses can affect your host machine, just very difficult. How good are antiviruses? Mm. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, the Windows Microsoft is very well known for providing excellent uh, solutions. So Windows Defender, unless you are doing something like uh, you should, basically Windows Defender can't do anything if you accidentally install a virus on your operating system because uh, you did not know that it was a virus. So Windows Defender is great for... Uh, for removing viruses. However, if the user makes an error, Windows Defender cannot do anything about that. So it's better that you know that this is a malicious link or you should not click this link or you should not install this software as it is not recognized by Microsoft or it hasn't come from the official app store. Uh, there are times where even if you go to a website to install, if you go to an official website to install a executable on Windows 10, that executable, if, if a hacker has hacked that website, then they can change that executable for their own executable, which will have code, which will give them access to your computer. However, uh, most companies in the world, they are very careful about this, so they make sure that their executables are actually legitimate. So uh, usually you get infected because you accidentally click something or execute something on your operating system that is a malware. I got infected once, but uh, Windows Defender uh, blocked the infection. Uh, what happened was that uh, one of my friends on Skype sent me a message. That was a malware. So as soon as I clicked it, there was this software I installed it. I thought it, it, that friend of mine was an artist. Now, that hacker was good at social engineering. So it read something like my art profile, uh, my, my art portfolio. So I clicked it, and that was a virus. I was sent a virus once on, uh, once on uh, by a by a potential client, I was sent a virus, and uh, that was sent to me because I'm a game developer, and that was a virus, but it did not affect me because it was an executable, and executables don't work on Linux. So uh, once, once, once I executed that on the virtual machine, that virtual machine got infected, but it did not affect me. 
And Linux itself is secure because uh, the programs that you install on Linux, uh, they are downloaded from official Linux repositories, unless you are using the Arch user repository, which is a community uh, community maintained repository of software. But since it's open source, the community can take a look at the code and remove anything malicious that they find. There are certain technical terms which if you explain it, it will be helpful. For example, brute force, phishing, email spoofing. आम आदमी को शायद इसका इतनी नॉलेज ना हो। Say, say again. Uh, phishing attempt phishing, क्या है? Okay, phishing. Let me talk about phishing. What I know about phishing. Phishing is what will a phishing attack be? It will be a link, okay? And if I click that link, it's going to show a clone of a Facebook page, but it won't be a Facebook page. So when you enter your credentials into that clone of a Facebook page, the hacker gets your information. Uh, brute force. I do not know about that. And the other, the last one. Email spoofing, uh, email Trojans. Spoof uh, email spoofing, I know about hardware spoofing, not about email spoofing. Uh, but it, uh, like, it wasn't in the category of malwares that I studied. But uh, by the way, Tails OS and Cubes OS do spoof your hardware, so you can't get fingerprinted. There are a few uh, online forums which are mainly addressed, but let me well, if you're using Windows, I suggest using LibreWolf, which is a browser which has privacy features built in. Okay, so it's going to spoof your hardware. You will not be fingerprinted. It contains uBlock Origin installed into it automatically, so it's going to block any ads that you see, except Facebook ads, because they are, they are not uh, the typical ads that you see on the internet. And other than that, Android, as long as you install applications that are, that are uh, on Google Play, you will not get infected, except that Google is not as good as Apple uh, in this, that they do not remove malware quickly. So it, there have been times where Google allowed malware to be put on their apps, uh, on their uh, Google Play Store. And uh, that infected millions of Android devices as well. Uh, but if you're really concerned about privacy, use a freedom respecting phone. And do not use any Google Android. Uh, use uh, free and open source Android ports. Uh, which are, uh, w uh, of course it is a task, it's not that easy. Linux, uh, Linux phones are also getting popular, but they're, they're not as usable as Android phones or iOS phones right now. But uh, the freedom respecting phones, they also have kill switches. So you can kill the microphone, you can kill the battery, you can uh, uh, even disconnect it, from, uh, disconnect it so that um, mobile towers like these uh, telecom towers, they cannot, they cannot crack you either. Imran Mani, there are two questions. Uh, can you please elaborate us how a, lay, how a layman should avoid viruses and malwares by not downloading from any unknown, uh, untrusted websites? Don't go to untrusted websites. Actually, the question is that they are saying untrusted or unknown websites. Yeah, don't. Or if you think that there's something, that there's something uh, like if, if there's an executable that you think is malicious, run it in a virtual machine. Like, learn how to use a virtual machine to run the software on it and test it. I do that all the time. When clients send me an APK, which is an Android package, I don't run it on my phone, I run it on a virtual machine. Because I have, like I stated, that once I was attacked by a potential client, and uh, the, uh, my virtual machine got infected. I didn't. And I use Arch Linux so I know exactly what is inside my computer. Like people say that don't take computing very seriously, like uh, nobody's gonna attack you. That's not actually true. I have seen people get, uh, get their hard drives broken and encrypted and even software engineers get attacked regularly. And you should know about computer viruses and how to avoid uh, these uh, malicious um, uh, malware, how to avoid malware. However, Android and mobile operating systems, generally speaking, are more secure than uh, desktop operating systems. As they are, but they also restrict their users. Like you cannot access uh, your Android phone as root, which is you cannot have administrative privileges 
on your Android phone. In the open source Android versions, you can have root access, which is administrative privileges. So you can delete anything you want on those Android phones. In your phone, that is, uh, that is uh, most likely has Google Android, it does not give you root access. So it is difficult for even a malware to get root access on, 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 uh, on an Android phone. Like, you need administrative privileges to sometimes harm the user, which Android does not give. There are other, uh, other ways that Apple users have been exploited. Like, uh, they would show dialogues which looked like they were from Apple inside the application, but they were actually the hacker's dialogues, which looked like Apple dialogues. So when, when the user clicked them, they would accidentally end up paying or purchasing something that they did not want. Imran Mani ka second question hai, ye unhone apna ek masla bhiyan ki hai. I have a virus in my office window which keeps generating IMG's 001.exe file in startup folders. Defender keeps deleting it but it does not catch yeah. which file is actually copying it to these, to these folders. <laughs> Can you suggest any solution to it? Reinstall operating system. Reinstall the operating system or, uh, or have a new hard drive, right? Even if Windows Defender. Now, I do not know what kind of uh, a virus it is. If it, has, uh, an, uh, if it has root access and it's a rootkit, then uh, you cannot remove it, really. Rootkits are very difficult to remove. Reinstall your operating system, or you can, reinstall, or you can install a Linux operating system and then virtualize Windows 10 to make sure that you never get infected again. Or even if you do, it's going to take you like 30 minutes to uh, fire up another virtual machine. It's very difficult to tell what kind of virus you're infected with, though. Mm -hmm. e even doctors, when they are trying to diagnose, they need tests. So if I cannot, no. Salman Mahmood Puchne, I received Google verification code through SMS, which I did not request. I understand that it is from someone who's trying to hack my account. But question is, what can I do in this situation? Can I track who's doing it? or at least the person's location? You can get the location because if, if the, uh, first of all, the location might not actually be the correct location, but if you go to attempted logins, you can see who tried to log in from where. But if the hacker, uh, but if Google, the attempted login was from China, it's not necessary that the hacker is in China. He could be in anywhere, like in, uh, like in a third world country, could be in, could be in China, but yeah, it's not, uh, you won't know for certain. But change your password. That's all you need to do. Just change your password. You'll be fine. Password badalne ke liye bhi koi aap achha koi majas batai kyunki log aise password rakhte hain jo easily crack ho jate hain. Use GNU Pass. GNU Pass. G and U Pass. It's a website to generate? It is a program which will generate passwords for you which are difficult to hack. And also, it will, it will save your passwords on your local machine. So unless your local machine does not get hacked, nobody has access to your passwords. Or you can also um, use other password managers. But GNU Pass, because I'm a free software advocate, free as in freedom software, not free as in free price. Free software can have a price. It's just that free software or Libre software is a software or a program that lets you do whatever you want with it. So since I am an advocate of those kind of software, uh, I basically would recommend GNU Pass, and that is what you should use.